could keep myself so hard when you were like screaming about TikTok. And I'm like, there's no way the music shit is gonna yeah. hit, bro. There's no way. And then looking back, I'm like, what a moron. So now every time something comes out, I'm like, go to it now. Yep. Threads, go to it. Go yep. to this, go to this. Yep. And I do think the TikTok one is gonna scare everyone straight. I have a funny feeling the next one, whether it's me or someone else yells like, this is the one, I think people are gonna be less hesitant to jump. If you wanna be great at this game, you're trying to pay attention. As long as the phone is the primary oh, yes. device, there's an opportunity. Attention is the number one asset. Let's talk about, I wanna talk about the future of social media. Okay. Like you're kinda of like the dude that just, there's like people that talk about social media, like, hey, you just go out, here's, here's what you should do on social media. And then there's like the trailblazers, who yeah. are like, but here's where it's headed. Yep. Here's, here's where you gotta get out to. I remember you like, I could keep myself so hard when you were like screaming about TikTok. Yeah. And I'm like, there's no way the music shit is gonna yeah. hit, bro. There's no way. And then looking back, I'm like, what a moron, dude. So now every time something comes out, I'm like, go to it now. Yep. Threads, go to it. Go yep. to this, go to this. Yep. Uh, but tell me, tell me, what do you see in the future for social media? Uh, the thing I, you know, it's funny. The reason I think I have a good track record and the way you set that up is I don't like predicting. It's not like I'm forcing the issue. Whether it was Be Real or Threads or all these things, I'll speak to them when they first come out and say, hey, there's some elements here. But the big thing you're always looking at for a new platform is, is it a feature or is it a platform? Is this something that Instagram or TikTok or YouTube Shorts can copy, integrate, and then there's really no need for this? Is there a, is there a network effect? You know, I think, what really sprung me to TikTok was it was playing on the interest graph. The things you were seeing in your feed were not people we followed and then right. what they were posting, it was what you were into. That was something I fell in love with with Tumblr back in 2007, 8, 9. So, you know, what's next? I think there's a couple things that could be next. I'm looking out for a platform that limits how many people you can follow. I invested in a startup called Path years ago that would only let you follow 220 people. Wow. And I really liked it. Um, so I think restrictions. Right now we have complete openness. I think restrictions. Can you limit who you follow? Can you limit how often someone can post? I think it'd be really cool if there was a social network that only let people post once a day. Wow. You know? And so then you, you're gonna get meaningful stuff. I try to think about what could, but I'm not overtly emotional of what's going to be. Right, right. I think what I do well is I move fast when there's new stuff. I taste it, I watch it, I analyze it, and then there's a moment where I think it's crossed over, intuitively. Yeah. And that's when I get loud, and um, you know, I look at all technology that way. I mean, I invested in AI startups five years ago. I, I bought Bitcoin in 2013. You're always trying to, if you wanna be great at this game, you're trying to pay attention, um, but you know, I'm really not sure, but I know there will be. As long as the phone is the primary oh, yes. device, there's an opportunity. It only happens once every three, four, five, six, seven years. Yeah. But when it happens, it's a big deal. And I do think the TikTok one is gonna scare everyone straight. What I mean by that is, I have a funny feeling the next one, whether it's me or someone else yells like, this is the one, yeah. I think people are gonna be less hesitant to jump. Yeah, quicker to jump, which makes it even more competitive. Yeah, it means the getting is, won't be as good for as long. I mean, the thing I'm most proud of is, I'm obsessed with my audience. When I jump into something and go all in and I'm gonna use it to build my brand, I'm trying to be loud with my audience because I want them to be put on as well. YouTube came out on December 15th, 2005. Wine Library TV was February 21st, 2006. So within two months of YouTube being out, I had a long form show. And I think from that day to this day, I'm proud that I'm still in the dirt, in the trenches, in the streets. And I think I'll stay that way forever because that's the part that brings me the most joy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not in it for the flex. Uh, I'm in it for the process. Let me ask you this. Obviously, you kind of talked about there and it made me think of it. Like, you, you, you've been early to a lot of stuff. Uh, Uber. Yep. Uh, um, Facebook, YouTube. Snap, Liquid Death. Like, early to Because I'm curious and I'm not scared. So that's what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Uh, there's all these, like, big wins you've had. Yeah. If you can, tell us maybe of a, of a loss that you had. Uber was, was too late. The only person I thanked in my first book besides my family is Travis. He came to me twice in the angel round. Yeah. If I put 50K in, it would have been three, four, five hundred million. Yeah. Huge miss. Um, I was, I mean, I was very early Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I didn't play, you know? Um, uh, Airbnb, when it was Air Bed and Breakfast, sent me an email that I never answered. <laughs> It was literally <laughs> Joe at airbedandbreakfast.com. Not yeah. even shortened yet. Yeah. Missed that. Missed. 
I mean, there's a, hold on, there's some really good ones. Um, God, I feel like there's one or two like real monsters. Well, uh, the Netflix one's a funny story Dustin just brought up in the background. I have this great story where I called, I was on vacation kind of analyzing and I was like, Netflix is about to go. This is like eight, nine years ago. And I called to buy it with my broker. And the... They're cheering for this devastating mistake I made. (laughs) I called and said, I was gonna write a pretty big check, especially because I don't tend to buy stock. And I, um, the phone gets cut off with bad service. I call him back and I'm continuing. And it gets cut off again. And I call back again and I can't get him. And I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll email him when I get back to the States. I never do it. It was a hefty check, call it seven figure investment. Wow. That would have like 30X, it was big. Yeah. So that's an over the counter kind of stock one. Um, there's so many, that, that's the coolest part. There's so many. I think the greatest thing I could say to everybody right now is, when I see I am me, I am a purebred entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. And a purebred entrepreneur, she or he, is making way more mistakes oh, yeah. than they're making good decisions. It's the nature of the game. I think it's like baseball. If you go three for 10, you go in the Hall of Fame. I think that's entrepreneurship. If you go three for 10, because most people go 0 for 50. Yeah, yeah. That's what people don't know about this game. Most people go 0 for 50. Mm-hmm. If you go three for 10, you're in the Hall of Fame, and I think um, I'm an example of that. The question that I always ask is, when it's all said and done, life is over. Obviously you got tons of fans, followers, yep. et cetera. What would be maybe one word or a phrase, I don't care, of what you would want people to remember you by? Like, when Gary has gone, remember him as this. He, ga- he gave more than he took. Gave more than he took? Why do, do you say that? Well, because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a builder. I'm gathering wealth, I'm ga- gathering awareness, I'm gathering admiration. And so I'm a gatherer, I'm a builder. And so the reason I say he gave more than he took is I'm taking a lot, yeah. you know? But I'm obsessed with the give back. Yeah, yeah. You know, behind the scenes, the game that I spit for free on social, I'm proud of that, I identify as that. I like being the older brother in my family. I like being the go-to in every circle I'm in, emotionally, financially, emotionally again, financially again. I'm that guy and I'm proud of that. It comes with, it comes with some loneliness. It comes with some resentment. It comes with its baggage, but I need to be accountable to that. I've made this bed and I'm proud to sleep in it. I love the, uh, obviously all kinds of great content, great stuff, but I think the one thing that I'm addicted to is the vision of the Jets. And, and the, it's not just the vision of the Jets, it's the, it's the sweater. Yeah, it's the I, sweater. I saw you frame it. Yeah. And that really like yeah. open, well, like dude, when yeah. I saw that, it was like, shit, dude. It's, it's like, big. It's so It's big, wild. man, because you know, I think people forget where they come from. I don't think people understand that they can do it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think people understand that money is not happiness. Yeah, it's not. Like, I think there's a lot of things the world's confused about. Yeah, yeah. I think the world is confused. I think the world, the world is very good at selling fear. It's selling envy. It's selling jealousy. It's selling capitalistic items. It's selling a lot of stuff that's not right. And I'm very, very conscious of that. And I'm, I'm focused on selling the right thing. I love it, man. You know, this whole thing, I was tracing it back, this whole thing of Aspire, these monthly events, it all, it actually all started uh, in your office in New York City. No way. And I went to my team and said, there's gotta be a way, there's gotta be a way. Like, hit him up and see if there's a way that we could do a podcast with Gary Vee. Let's just start at the top. Like, back, redo backwards, it, yep. do it backwards. And uh, my team called up your team and it came back with a big no. They're like, <laughs> no. And, my, and I, I even said, well, like, can we just like offer him money? Like, just, yeah. You know. So they went back and it was like, no, he doesn't take money. It's like, shit. And what happened was, you made a tweet. You made a tweet that said, uh, I'm launching- A book. No. Uh, Sneakers, wine, wine. wine, empathy wines. Empathy wines. I remember now. Empathy wines, bro. And it was like, uh, partner my, with me. My like, favorite thing is like living back in my old days. Like if I have an agenda, V friends, sneakers, a book, yeah. empathy wines. I'm always like, man, people are offering me money all the time for access. It's the number one value. Let me discount that heavily and attach it to, I feel weird about the money. Sure, like I'm not gonna do that. But hey, if you're gonna buy wine anyway, 
buy my wine and I'm gonna give you the thing you actually want. And it's been my favorite story through the years on sneakers, books, be friends and empathy, yeah. that how things like that have kicked off. Dude. So you found the moment. That was it. I, found I remember it. that podcast well, yep. Long story short happened was I started posting it and then everybody else wanted to be on the show. Of course. And so all these business owners yeah. started to come in and I created it. Yeah, yeah, and they started. That that's what kicked. That off. was a spark. The spark of all the shit was because of the. Uh, uh, I love that. That I did in your place, and we hit the wine, and uh, it was cool, dude. That's but cool, the brother. Thing launched off of that that's right cool, there. brother.